when I was coming out of Potter, for every director there was that could only see me as Harry. There were people who found it exciting to show me as something else. They were like, okay, everyone knows you as this one thing, but I get to be the director who shows you to the world like this. No, Alan's very funny. That's what nobody realized about Alan. Alan, I mean, this was obviously, like, you know, it, I won't say that this was the height of his wit. Yeah, so basically on the third film, there was this massive, huge wide shot in the Great Hall with all of us sleeping, and, and Alan uh, hid a fart machine in my sleeping bag without me realizing. We like to swim <laughs> in the deepest waters. And of course, at the time, it started going off, and I was just like a teenager, so I was really embarrassed and, like, annoyed. And then I realized it was Alan Rickman and Michael Gambon. And I was like... What? <laughs> yeah, but it was also the kind of thing where like Alfonso, who directed the third film, was like having fun, but also willing to let us waste a take on a massive shot with 300 people in the thing because it was funny. That was what one of the things that was good about growing up on those films is that there was an understanding from everybody on set that like we're a bunch of kids and it's still okay to have fun and make it a fun place to work. The thing I wanted to do actually was be a stuntman. Um, I really, I, I loved working with all the stuntmen on the first Potter film and I loved what they did. Um, and then at some point somebody explained to me what it takes to get onto the stunt register in the UK, mm. which is, you know, you've got to be instructor level in six different disciplines. And I was just like, oh yeah, no, I'm never doing that. That sounds way too hard. I'll just be an actor. David Copperfield for the BBC. If you look back on that, I mean, that cast is incredible. A lot of people actually who ended up being in Potter as well. Uh, well, my first film and my second job was The Taylor of Panama. So Jeffrey Rush and Jamie Lee Curtis were my parents and, I, and Pierce Brosnan was in it. And he was like at the peak of being Bond at the time. So I was like, you know, completely obsessed. And he was very, he signed autographs for my entire class. Alex Aja, one of my favorite. How about you guys beat the shit out of each other and the winner gets an exclusive interview with me. And I love that film. I love that script so much. I love the film, I love the character. It was one where I felt very good, I think, on set the whole time. And when you feel that, I think you come across as being, as being freer. And Alex is one of the people as well that I always say that when I was coming out of Potter, for every director there was that could only see me as Harry. There were people like mm. Alex or John Krakidas or the Daniels who found it exciting to show me as something else. They were like, okay, everyone knows you as this one thing, but I get to be the director who shows you to the world like this. And Alex was one of those people who like saw something in me and gave me a, a good opportunity. If we're honest as well, the um, Fairfax in this and um, the whatever his, whatever his name was in Now You Seen Whatever I Played in that, they're quite similar. You know, they're, they're, the, they're the sons of billionaires who, who want people to like them. And so I feel like uh, this is a sort of an extension of that character. So like he thinks he's James Bond and Indiana Jones and doesn't realize that he's actually <laughs> like the villain of those things. There's something very fun about playing someone who's so totally delusional and has no self-awareness. But yeah, there was a bunch of stuff about him that I found really really, really funny. I have to respectfully decline. I'm afraid I must insist. Yes, that is true. I, I wrote a lot of poetry when I was a teenager. At the time, I was very, very proud of it. And now I look back and go, oh, it's probably not all, not all very good. And then like the Daily Mail or somebody like gave like a review, like reviewed my 15 year old poetry and was like, nah, his form is a little lacking and mediocre. Like, yeah, shut up, dude, I'm 15. It's out there in the world for people if they want to find it. I, I mostly write scripts now. Like I, I, mm -hmm. I want to, that's where I want to be in a few years is, is directing things and hopefully directing things that I've written. I write poetry very, very, very occasionally still, but um, not nearly as much as when I was a romantic teenager. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm a really bad swimmer. I can't, I can swim underwater really well. So, I mean, like I'm very, I'm fine underwater with like a, you know, the scuba stuff, like that's all good. I did a lot of that on Harry Potter. So I was kind of, I'm, I know how to do that. On the fourth movie, I did 41 hours underwater. It's like 41 hours and 23 minutes. I know the exact, uh, the exact amount of time I was under for, which is cool. But actual swimming, just like treading water. Like I can't even float. Like I just sink. Uh, 
I think honestly that there's a there's a very particular challenge that goes with um, not being the lead in something and being the guy who comes in w with big speeches, but you're not you're not in every scene. The thing I always get really stressed about is the idea that I never want to be the person that comes in and slows things down, um, particularly when you're mm. working with like Sandra Bullock, who you know I am frankly very in awe of and incredibly impressed by. So it was mostly just the stress of learning all the dialogue and just making sure that you weren't going to be the person slowing things down on the day. <laughs>